Welcome back to our Seal Right Workbench. This is the sixth video in a series we're calling Learning to Sew. So whether you're new to sewing or you need a refresher, this is the perfect place for you. Today, we're gonna to be showing you how to sew piping. Piping adds a crisp, finished look to edges of pillows and cushions. Although not every project uses piping, it's still a very valuable technique to learn. For this example, we're gonna be using some pre-made vinyl piping. If you would like to learn how to make your own piping to match your project, check out our video on making custom piping, which we've linked in the description, as well as the info button in the top right corner. We are gonna be using the Ultrafeed LSC with a piping foot attachment. So make sure that you have the proper foot for your machine to accommodate piping. We've cut a square of fabric to represent the plate of a cushion application. So we wanna start our piping on what will be the back side of the cushion. So since this is a square piece of fabric, we can just decide what the back side is. So start your piping a little bit above the halfway point on this side. This is just gonna make joining the two ends easier. The piping is gonna be installed on the edge of the fabric with the cording part closest to the inside because this is the side that will be shown once the pieces are sewn together. Now, if you'd like, you can hold the piping in place as you sew, or you can use clips or basting tape. For this example, we're gonna be using basting tape to hold it into place. So we're gonna make sure to apply it as close to the edge of the piping as possible. Now that we're close to a corner, we can talk about some techniques to achieve the cleanest look. So first of all, if you don't have pre-made slits in the piping like ours, you will want to add some pre-made slits here. This just allows the fabric to bend more easily. So the sharpness of your corners is up to you. You can either have a wider corner or you can have a sharper 90 degree corner. We're gonna show you a little bit more of a sharp corner. So there, that is what our corner is gonna look like. So we're gonna go ahead and apply the rest of the piping to the cushion face. So when we get back to our start point, we're just gonna leave um, a couple inches of extra overlap for now. So with the piping lined up correctly, we're gonna take the piece over to our sewing machine and line it up with the groove of the presser foot. So for the ultra feed, we recommend rotating the balance wheel until the bottoms of the presser feet are level, which will just make it easier to position the piping in the channel. As we start sewing, there's no need to back stitch since we'll be sewing back over it when we get to the end. When we get pretty close to the corner, we're gonna go ahead and bury our needle. So if you wanna be extra precise with your stitches, you can actually hand crank the balance wheel or you can use the speed reduction upgrade package with the Monster 2 balance wheel to achieve slow speed control. Then we're just gonna slowly sew around the corner, making sure to get the stitch as close to the piping as possible without going in the piping. So if you want to make a turn, you can bury your needle, lift the presser foot up, and rotate it. So once you've rounded the corner, you can continue sewing as normal. And then as we approach the second corner, we can demonstrate how to sew that again. This time, we're gonna use our Monster 2 balance wheel to show you how to slowly use your pedal control to take this turn. 
We currently have the Worker Bee motor dial turned to its slowest speed setting, which is a half stitch per second. So once we've gotten a few inches away from our start point, we are gonna bury our needle, and then we're gonna show you how to match up the ends. First, we're gonna pull back the fabric a little bit from the piping. So if you don't have pre-made piping, you might have to rip out some of the stitches to do this. Then we're gonna line our cording up, just like so, and we're gonna use our scissors and cut straight across it. And since we cut at the same point, they should be flush now. We actually have a little bit of, a little bit too much excess on this one. So we're gonna cut some of that off, just like that. Then we're gonna tuck uh, one side of the piping in the other, making sure that the cording is lining up with each other. Then we're gonna fold that outer edge around the other one. So it kind of just sandwiches it. If your piping is woven fabric instead of vinyl like we have, then you'll want to fold this in under so that there's no raw edge exposed. But since ours is vinyl, we don't have to worry about that. Then we're gonna sandwich that and continue to sew it into place. And then we'll go ahead and backstitch here. Next, we're gonna show you how to add the next layer to your application. So we have a piece of fabric that will be the side of the cushion. So this is also known as the boxing. So we are gonna line the fabric up with the edge of the application, um, and we're gonna use some basting tape to hold that into place. And then just like the piping, we're gonna make some notches to take this corner a little bit easier. So obviously we don't have a full boxing for this. This is just an example. So then we're gonna take it back under the sewing machine and place it in that same groove and sew it into place. So here is the finished example. If you're not satisfied with the crease that is created in piping when it is sewn around a sharp corner, you can use a more rounded corner instead. Creating a more rounded corner is easier to sew. And for this example, we wanted to show you the harder way to do it so that you would know how. That's how you sew piping on an application. Now, if you haven't already seen the rest of our Learning to Sew series, we've linked the playlist in the description below, so make sure to check that out. And if you're looking for a project to start your sewing journey, we have a range of DIY project videos from beginners all the way through more advanced sewers. Make sure to subscribe to our two YouTube channels, Sailrite Workbench and Sailrite DIY, because you won't want to miss out on the hundreds of free video resources there. Thanks for watching and we'll see you guys next time for part seven of our Learning to Sew series.